as Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day. Alleluia. Who did once upon a cross. Alleluia. Suffered to redeem a lost. Alleluia. Hymns of praise then let us sing. Alleluia. Unto Christ a heavenly King. Alleluia. Who went on the cross and prayed. Alleluia. Sinners to redeem and save. Alleluia. But the pains which he endured. Alleluia. Our salvation have procured. Alleluia. Now he reigns a pope as king. Alleluia. Where the angels ever sing. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, on this Divine Mercy Sunday, we come before the altar pleading to our God for that divine mercy that uh, he will soon bring this suffering throughout the world uh, to a close. Uh, pleading for all of those who are weary, all of those who have been affected in a very direct way by this global crisis that has hurt so many people throughout the world. We lift up in prayer as well those who are suffering with the, the virus itself, those who have lost loved ones um, in mortality to the virus. And we lift up those workers who place their lives and their health at risk in the work that they do. With all of that, we come in with great faith, uh, that faith that uh, nourished and strengthened uh, Thomas the Apostle as we listen today in the Gospel, um, who, who doubted, whose own faith needed strengthening, and certainly Jesus strengthened his faith, his faith. May he strengthen ours today. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries of God's love, we pause as we call to mind our sinfulness and we ask God for his pardon and for his peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Son, 
God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and their possessions and divide them among all, according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. Thanks to the Lord for Falling, but the Lord helped me. My 
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith more precious than gold that is perishable even though tested by fire may prove to be for praise glory and honor at the revelation of jesus christ although you have not seen him you love him even though you do not see him now yet believe in him you rejoice with an indescribable and joyous joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. be with you and with your spirit a proclamation of the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. 
As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Events of the last several months have caused our awareness of the fragility of our world and of our shared morality, our shared mortality, to be raised within our hearts and our minds. The depth of human suffering and pain has become ever more evident. We have heard of the physical suffering of our brothers and sisters who have succumbed to the coronavirus here in the United States and indeed throughout the world. We are only now beginning to recognize the harm that this pandemic has caused to the economy and the businesses upon which our people depend. And likewise, there is great concern about how our social organizations and yes, our religious communities are going to begin to reopen. Schools, our court systems, and our parishes are confronted with this challenge. Amid our uncertainty and our questioning and isolation, we could too easily be tempted to lose hope. This temptation grows as we evaluate everything we are experiencing against the horizons of what has been rather than against the tapestry of what God has done in Jesus and continues to do through the power of the Spirit. The tapestry, which is being woven through the power of the Spirit in our lives and in our own communal and personal histories. The first letter of Peter addresses this temptation by presenting to the early church that tapestry of what God is doing. The community Peter addresses is losing their faith as they are challenged with a persecution that is emerging. Peter's greeting to that community reminds them and challenges them to embrace more fully the resurrection of Jesus. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us new birth to living hope. This short greeting echoes in our hearts and souls during this time of crisis. This greeting assures us that God has acted in mercy, that we might come to know more deeply God's love and compassion, 
a love and compassion we are invited to live. This greeting reminds us that we have experienced rebirth in the waters of baptism, and that rebirth is the very foundation of our hope. For the assurance of God's merciful, merciful care has us hoping in an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. An inheritance that is safeguarded in faith. Throughout this Easter, Easter season, we renew the vows of our baptism and respond to the questions that were asked to our godparents and parents or perhaps those who are baptized as adults to themselves. Questions that have us reasserting that we believe in God, that we believe in the resurrected Jesus, that we believe in the power of the Spirit, we believe in the church, a church that remains strong even in this time of crisis. And of course, our profession of faith concludes with that great affirmation of hope. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. This is the tapestry that God weaves in human history. This is the tapestry of salvation. It is vital in this time of turmoil that we reflect upon that salvation history. It is vital that we recognize God has never abandoned God's people. God rescued his chosen people from slavery in Egypt and led them through the desert to the promised land. God forged a covenant with his people, and he remained faithful to that covenant, even when the human family wandered so far. God sent his son into our history to reveal the depth of God's love for us, and also through his death and resurrection to offer us life, to reveal that inheritance that is ours, an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. So we are a people of hope. But how do we come to that hope and live that hope in this time of uncertainty? First, I think we must begin by recognizing the images of that imperishable, undefiled, and unfading inheritance in faith. We know that that inheritance is the forgiveness of our sins and the capacity for each of us to have a relationship with the divine. In baptism, we have already been given that inheritance. It is ours to claim, it is ours to live, and it is ours to share with one another. In faith, we know that we live our relationship with God in the context of our lives and the relationships we share. This recognition is deepened through our experiencing of sheltering at home and considering the importance of the relationships of our family, of our friends, and yes, our Christian community. In this recognition, we perceive how God used our families first that we might experience love, and for most of us, God used our families to bring us to faith. During this time of social distancing, and for many, this time of isolation, we have cried out to God more fervently for assistance and care. Consequently, we are reminded that God, though unseen, as Peter says in his letter, is with us and continues to hear our cries continues to listen to our prayers. And as we yearn to resume a more normal routine, we have also rediscovered a hunger to gather for worship, a hunger to gather around this table of sacrifice, this altar of Christ's presence, and to once again receive the Eucharist. So as we await that great release, that great homecoming for which we desire, we continue to join together in prayer, raising our voices, thanking God 
for the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, and thanking God for that inheritance which is ours through his surrender, his life, his death, and indeed, his resurrection. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess from baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Casting doubt aside, we praise our Lord and humbly ask for, the, for answer to our prayers and for those of the whole world. For the church, for all that are with us in spirit, as we continue to shelter in place, know that we will be able to worship together again. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, for all who answered the call to a life of civic service, that they may be ever mindful of the sanctity of all life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this Christian community, for all of us and those joining in our live stream to celebrate Christ's Paschal victory, that faith light our lives and the lives of those we love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our candidates and catechumens, for those still preparing to receive initiation into the church, that God may reward their patience and perseverance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, especially those soon to pass through death to new life, that their hearts be filled with peace and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the beloved dead, for our brothers and sisters who have died, that God may raise them up on the last day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Holy and loving God, you raised your Son from death in the tomb to life. Hear us and give answer through the same Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, and that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. 
and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Clair, St. Thomas, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May, may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. With your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, mercy. sins of the world, grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. people thirst and hunger. 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And just before the, the final blessing, I want, as Father Joseph mentioned in his homily, that we continue to hold each other in prayer uh, in a special way, those who are, have been directly affected by the, the crisis, by the, the virus, um, and uh, those for the many, many people throughout the world in our own communities that are suffering terribly because of this crisis. May we hold each other in prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.